Hi everyone, welcome back. Voice is still a little jacked up, but it's getting to be crunch time. And this is going on scales. If you're just joining me, thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. Please subscribe if you can. We're trying to get up to at least a thousand to start so that we can get Google and all these other faceless corporations to pay for my racing bills. Anyway, tell your friends, by the way, because word of mouth is a really great way to uh, spread the channel and tell people about it. And I've tried the advertising thing and I tried all that and it just does not work anywhere near as good as word of mouth. Anyway, today, I'm going to fill you in on what I've been doing, because I've been doing a few things off of camera. But we are going on scales. We have at least a week and a half before we go racing again. But I want to use all that time to make sure that this thing is ready. So why don't I fill you in on what's been going on off camera. You can see these two rears sitting here, both Ford 9-inch rears. Well, I redid the lowers on my bolt-in axle which is legal for another track, and I put new bushings in it. And for my floating rear, which is not in the car because I think we're going to have fitment issues, I redid the upper mounts, which, yeah, I didn't paint it or nothing or polish it up. It's just kind of raw and ugly looking, but it fits my fixture, and it fits in the car really well. I just got to do a lot of more measuring. I got to fix this pad as well. I got to do some more measuring. I want to make sure the wheelbase is even. I want to make sure that it tracks straight, make sure all the mounts are perfect before I try it in the car again. Plus, I think that the caliper mounts are going to be a little bit tight to the frame, so I'm kind of concerned about that. Otherwise, those two, hopefully, fingers crossed, are repaired. Now, you'll notice that the car is lettered up that I showed you in my last video. It's a little dirty still. I still got a wiper down. I just hit it with the old California duster that I accidentally spilled super clean all over. Doesn't really super clean. Now it's just kind of gummed up. But anyway, I'm about to take this thing, put her on the ground. I got all four brand new tires on the car from my brother. Thank you very much again. Funny story. Um, I'm wearing a hat because I got a bandage inside of it. And uh, my brother got me a tire machine, which is outside here. You can see this red thing over here. And it helped me a ton with changing tires over instead of me sitting on the ground using tire spoons and stuff. But uh, I didn't really know how to use it. And I was trying to learn without reading directions or like looking online or anything. And I was kind of prying with this arm and it slipped and the bar knocked me right in my head. And I got about a inch long gash in my head and I was bleeding pretty much everywhere yesterday so I'm just kind of holding it in right now because I hate going to the hospital and I'm not putting stitches in it'll heal trust me it'll be fine but anyway we're dealing with that I did a lot of work to get this car cleaned off you can notice it's not a table anymore and I went through and vacuumed it out now we got to get it on the ground and get it onto some blocks set up here on my blocks with the scale sitting here whenever you make pretty much any changes she goes on scales uh if you don't have scales i don't know what to tell you because i raced without them for the better part of a decade or so or even more and as soon as we got specialized tools to help set up my car immediately found speed because you could be more consistent so if you're going to race, you got to spend money. Might as well spend it on stuff that works. Anyway, we made, obviously, a ton of changes to this car. So, obviously, I had to change the whole rear clip, the spring buckets, every nothing is at the correct height. So, I ran around before setting this up and got some ride heights while it was on the flat ground. So, now I know at least where I'm starting from and where I should be. Now it's on the blocks, and I know that these blocks are the same height and level as the 
uh, scale pads. So if I need to check my ride heights, I could roll it forward or backwards to make sure that I get those heights. And I can make adjustments to how it scales based off of that. I've got ideas for what I want to do in my head. And now we just have to simply roll it on and off, do a whole mess of adjusting, and then I'm going to leave it. I'm not going to set the scales yet. I'm going to set it for now so that I can work on the front end and get those adjusted properly. And then when we're about ready to go race, we'll roll it back on scales one last time and I can do my final scaling. But at least then it'll be closer and I won't be rushing. So I got an update from the first scaling here. And surprisingly, we're actually like 75 pounds light now. Uh, I do have a full tank of fuel. I got everything bolted onto the car. I got the tire pressure set. I just don't have any lead in the car. And now remember last year, if anybody watched this channel last year, I was talking about how heavy the car was because we didn't really put any lead in the car. Like, if we had the stock rear in, we had to put a little bit in, but for the amount that I have to put in, I got to put, like, gosh, 100 to 110 pounds in the car. So, I guess I'll go digging through my pile of lead sitting back here and see if we got about 100 pounds of lead, and uh, we'll figure out where a lot of it can go. So, I found a bunch of pieces of lead hanging around. I got a little bit more over there if I need it, but... What you do is you take your scale. Let's go to wheel weights. All right, I think I'm at my left rear, so we're probably going to see that one move. We, I think, need at least 110 pounds. I don't know what these are. Some of them are labeled. Oh, cripes. Some of them aren't. I don't know where I'm going to put these. Lead is lead. Let's see what that says. 124 pounds. All right, let's yank this one off. 101 pounds. Let me see if I can find another one. All right, what's that one say? 116. Try again. Well, this is the only one else I got. It might be close. 107. You know what? I think I'll rather go a little bit over by five pounds, six pounds. Yeah, that's not so bad. I think we'll go with that. We'll start mocking up places to put it. I'm going to put, I think everything is even as possible across the car because of the left side weight. And I think I'm going to take like 40 pounds or so and put it on the left side and maybe that'll bring my percentage on the left side up a little bit I don't really know We're, this is one of those processes which is why I want to start a week or two in advance because now I got a place not this one ouch but you know one two three four five pieces of lead and I'm gonna have to do a lot of welding and figuring out stuff Here's where we're at. I got that one to put in, but the bolts that I welded to the chassis are too hot and I don't want to melt the lead. So that means I've got three of the five bolted in so far. But these angle ones where I need to put them is kind of weird. So what I'm doing is drawing templates where the bolt holes are. And I'm going to take a drill with a half inch drill bit and cut these holes out with that drill bit. And then I'm going to take them under the car and mark out where I should drill holes or weld something or whatever the case may be. That way, when I go to go under there, I can put bolts in it, hang the lead, and just zip them in with my gun. And we don't have to really mess around with, you know, 20 some, 22 pounds a piece trying to hold it up there and mark things. It's kind of a pain. It really hurts. My elbows kill me from my day job, so... This is where we're at. This took five minutes with my trusty cardboard knife that I don't know where I got it from, but I sharpened it on the grinding wheel and seems like it's fine. Uh, so that's our templates. We're going to drill them out, get up under the car, mark, drill holes, 
And hopefully these will go in because the weight numbers are correct. I just need to get the cross weight right. Status report, after a few hours, it got dark out. So I shut the door for more light. But we got every piece that I needed to put in the car in. It's just a matter of one piece that I might want to move from here to here, depending on left side weight, just because I don't know what it's going to be. But I'm going to take a break for tonight. I have an iRacing league race going on. We're going to leave the scales under the car. But then after this, I think it's just going to be turning bolts. Once we get a few bolts turned and we see numbers that we want to see on the scales, I can at least put it back up in the air for maybe a week and get to work on valve springs and uh, getting those replaced. And once I get that set, I can get the motor running like next week to make sure that works, make sure the drive line works, make sure there's no issues with that. Then day or two before the race we'll put her back on scales finalize that load the trailer and we'll be at the racetrack but uh that'll wait for the next video all right for tonight this is it and i'll see you tomorrow back again in the shop nice sunny 60 degree day second one in a row first two days of spring have been beautiful i hope that that trend continues for race day Got back on scales again today. Again, a little bit of a disclaimer. I know that I'm, I've really kind of been showing a little bit more than what I ever intended of the car because I like to keep my secrets as a racer. But a lot of the stuff that I've showed you is all basic stuff. It's like all the parts and pieces, it's all got to be that way by rules. Um, what I'm not showing you is what spring rates I run, what springs I run, what shocks I run, because what's in the car, that's all just setup stuff. I put the stuff that I race in right before I go out on track. I don't, I don't really share a lot of that stuff. Where the uppers are positioned, you know, all that sort of thing. That's not even set yet. That's just kind of there for making or allowing the car to roll if I need it to roll. So, um, I'm sorry if you if you don't, if you wanted to see a bunch of secrets and stuff like uh, setup stuff, but um, again, I keep that kind of proprietary. Um, obviously, if you saw last year, not like it really did me any good anyway. But uh, whatever cars I did set up were actually really fast. So, um, hoping that it translates over now that the thing is hopefully straight. I'm just like fingers crossed on that. But anyway, enough enough of the disclaimer. We're going to get back to turning bolts on this thing. I might need to move lead around as the numbers change because I'm, uh, for some reason, way underneath my cross weight number by, like, a ton. Like, this is... I, I'm, like, looking at the scales to make sure they're not backwards. So, <laughs> it's, like, that bad. So, I've got to get to turning bolts. Luckily, my car does have front jacking bolts. The only thing that it really does is it allows me to stay, like do this on my own a little bit easier. Instead of me blowing the front end apart and moving a cup like this to try to screw it down, I can just throw a jack in there or a, a wrench in there and just jack it down. But all right, enough talking. I got to get to work. This thing needs, I have to check the ride heights constantly. I have to have it on scales for an indefinite number of time. And I've got to do a lot of weight jacking with the jacking bolts to get the weights right. So I got to get to work. By the way, quick tech tip here. If you're doing ride heights by yourself, you can get a close idea of what you're doing by taking a Stanley Power Lock, no free ads, 12 foot model, because the body here is exactly two inches. Makes your math real easy. Take it and kind of halfway set the lock so that it just barely, just barely holds onto it and you can slide the tape very easily. 
You do it, you stick it under the frame rail, and then you just kind of lean on the door a little bit. You know, nothing too fancy. You don't jump on it, just kind of sit on the door with your feet on the floor, and then just kind of pick your feet up just a hair. You know what I mean? And that'll give you at least a close ride height. You, you want somebody to help you with this, but if you want a close number within like an eighth of an inch or even less than that, it might even be a 16. Stanley Power Lock, 12 foot, two inch body. Makes your math real easy. I hope you all enjoyed my uh, unusual workout routine, but I can tell I'm out of shape or getting old because getting in and out of the car sucks. But I guess I just got to work out more instead of being a sissy. All right, so you watched me basically scale the car without me in it until I got to a number where I was kind of comfortable and then I started getting into it and fine tuning it. The reason I did that was because I wanted to look at the ride heights as I was scaling. And I know the number to look for without me in the car, which is really useful. Um, like if you get your car, if you're doing this on your own, like I am, you get the car scaled, leave it on the scales, get out and look at the number on the scales. That way, at least when you're, doing this by yourself, you can do exactly what I did. You can move the car back and forth on the blocks, measure ride heights, see where you want to make your adjustments, and then get the numbers to where that number is on the scales without you in the car, get in, and bang. You don't really have to do a heck of a lot of adjustments otherwise. I kind of overdid it though, and I had to go back uh, about a percent. I went over by a whole ton and I had to go back and redo it so I had to get out well in and out like an unnecessary amount of times also I kind of goofed on my left side weight I had to pull a weight out that was more towards the left side and I got to move it to the right side I have to weld a bolt or some kind of a fixture to the frame I got it sitting on top of the frame rail whatever it's in the right spot I got to just weld that up and uh, the preliminary scaling is actually done. So once I get that weight down and welded in, I can get moving on doing engine work, which means the car could probably go back up in the air so it doesn't sit on the ground for two weeks. And I can get to work replacing and adjusting the valves. So we're moving forward here. I got numbers I wanted and hopefully they work because I think this car is going to be completely different than what it used to be based off of what I could measure and all the work that I did to it. So fingers crossed, we're just going to not reinvent the wheel here. We're just going to go with it. So let me get this off and we'll start doing something else. So since we set our initial scaling, what we really need to do now is we need to go put it on turning plates and set our front geometry, caster camber toe and all that stuff. Uh, because when I do my final scaling, just to make sure it's really not going to change but if you actually change your ride height at any time whatsoever if you make any adjustments on a weight jacking bolt or to a tire size or whatever the case may be where you adjust the ride height of the car in any way that's going to change your geometry so surprisingly enough so i'm gonna set that up i've got it on the block still from scaling so what I'll do is I'll take the front scales out, move those out, take shims, like little thin pieces of plywood, and my turning plates, because I do have turning plates. Those are expensive though for what they are, gross. But you can make them yourself for cheaper, but I was gifted some, so I lucked out. But I gotta set it on turning plates. We're gonna set our caster camber toe. 
and then we'll be ready for initial uh, or final scaling after we do all our engine stuff, but we got to get through the list. When it comes to your regular tools, you can cheap out. Every single thing I have, except for what was given to me for free, is just Harbor Freight or whatever the heck I found at a yard sale or any sort of, you know, flea market or something. I have some nice power tools, but most of it is like old stuff that was kind of cheap or Harbor Freight like this. I mean, they work fine. But what you don't really want to cheap on is your setup stuff. Because that matters. That's why I pay the good money and I save the good money for the good tools. Good setup equipment will take you wherever you want to go. Gonna believe this but for the second time in trying to set this car up it took me like five minutes and I didn't even change anything I just tightened the bolts down for the uppers and the numbers were bang on what I wanted when I put it on scales earlier I have a specific amount of weight I don't know if I mentioned it or not but I have a specific amount or percentage of weight that I like to use in the car and it was dead on that number to the pound this I put the gauge on it checked caster camber and it's golden I should have probably done tow oh I do have my tow bar here I probably should do that yeah I'll do that and then after that we're attacking valve springs so I'm taking a little break just kind of sitting here and almost a little bit of disbelief because it's really weird how things are just falling together on this thing. I mean, I put it on scales. I barely did any lead work to it and the numbers just immediately right where I wanted them. Then I went and did the front geometry and never touched a bolt. It was exactly where I wanted. And I changed the springs and shocks. <sighs> Went and checked the toe. <laughs> Perfect. Never touched a bolt. I had this car in half. It was literally cut in half. And as I put it together, everything is falling into place right where I want it. I am not complaining whatsoever. This is making my life so much easier. So what I need to do now is I just need to get the car back up in the air because I do have to check a few things underneath it. And I have to get the valve train done and I want to make sure it's not sitting on the springs and sagging everything out too much because, you know, just for longevity's sake. So... That's where I'm at right now. I just figured I'd give you a little update while I'm sitting here and uh, just trying to take it all in because this is uh, unexpected and very, very welcome change from the ordinary. Got the door open because it's beautiful out. I think what I'm going to do is what I usually do when I do my valve springs is I pull all the spark plugs out because you got to pump up the cylinders full of air when you're pulling that out. Then you use your valve spring tool here. I don't really use that handle. Valve springs are finally done here as the sun is setting again. Now I gotta go back and lash all the valves. I've done a video on lashing valves before, and if you want to go back and look for that. But uh, what I typically do is a very lazy way 
I put my wrench on the crank, spill all my spark plugs, turn it over and I go each individual cylinder. And I just do in, uh, EOIC, exhaust open, intake close. And basically just tighten it down until you can barely, or just until it's barely able to turn on the push rod. And then I do whatever this factory spec is. It might be quarter turn, check your book. And then we lock her down. fired up since all the valves are adjusted and I got water in it I need to know if everything leaks or if it actually holds so especially under pressure so I think we're gonna try firing it off and uh, checking for leaks I hope I got my pen light uh, nope oh well oh she's already leaking because my funnel doesn't seat properly oh well let's get her fired up Or not. Oh, just plugged in. She's still leaking all over the place. Great. an issue. Ooh, I can hear a lot of bubbles in there. All right, might have to burp the uh, coolant system a little bit. Hopefully it's not built pressure yet. Don't do this at home. Okay. All right. I'll get her dried up. Oh, geez. There's just... It just overfilled, so all right. Well, I'll, I'll get her dried up and we'll try it again eventually. Got the ventilation system going, my old repurposed furnace fan on a shopping cart frame. It's a little foggy in here. I had to burn off a lot of the Marvel Mystery Oil, but I got her up to about now 160 or so, and that's where she kind of flatlined. But it seems to be not leaking anywhere, fingers crossed. Uh, I did find a couple things loose, though. The fuel pump fitting was leaking fuel. I had to throw another rotation on that. 
make sure that was tight. And the block plugs were only finger tight. They weren't leaking, but if uh, I guarantee you with a little vibration, they would have started leaking. I gotta tell y'all, it's a huge relief to have this thing running and have no leaks and have no issues other than what I found. I can't say I didn't find anything or had any problems, but we did get it fixed. So that's gonna be it for this video. Thank you all so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. We got one more week until I'm sitting in this car and we're going racing. And I'm actually excited for once because it's gonna be different and I hope that it's better. But anyway, I appreciate everybody's support so much. Thank you all for subscribing, for sharing, for telling your friends. And if you haven't already, please consider doing all of those things because it helps me on the business end and it doesn't cost you a thing. Maybe someday if we get enough subscribers built up and uh, I start getting some ad revenue coming into the team, then maybe we can start working on merch and stuff. But uh, otherwise, uh, just enjoy the uh, free videos for now and uh, maybe we'll get something going in the future. But thank you all again so much. I greatly appreciate it. Until next time. Thank you.